If you want to see what Anna looks like, you'll have to go to the video. Because she was hiding behind the computer. We're just making fun of this. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> we are going to sing a hymn. I told my wife when Sam asked, I said, we're going to start with Christmas hymns right after Thanksgiving. She goes, really? I said, yes. And my favorite one I haven't gotten to sing in a group for a while. So uh, even though we're only having two hymns today, uh, please stand and we're going to sing. I know you don't have your hymnals, but hymn number 132, Angels We Have Heard on High. So let's sing it out and praise our Lord. I don't know if you're like me, but I wish we could do some more worship, you know? I miss those just worship services. He is so worthy of our worship, um, but he wants to talk to us as well. Amen? How many of you had a good week? All right. How many of you ate a lot of turkey? A lot of turkey? Wow. How many of you gained five pounds? Serious? 
I've gained a few as well. We'll go to the gym tomorrow. Amen? You've got to have your mask on, though. You know that. Uh, anyway, but praise God for another great day. He's been faithful. Another holiday coming gone. Soon before you know it is Christmas. And then hopefully 2021 will be a whole lot better than we've had. It's been quite a year this year. But, uh... Oh, we hope. We hope. Oh, we hope, yeah. Hope and pray, right? Amen. Well, before I get into today's message, let me just let me just just say that uh, uh, let me just say that uh, man, I got a big mouth. You can lower that a little. That's... <laughs> but let me just say it, this: this has been a very, very hard. Um, I mean, it, it was hard preparing. Uh, it's been a tough year, and you know, just listening to and and reflecting on what the Holy Spirit was bringing to mind. Uh, was very hard for me. Uh, it's probably the hardest year for me in all of my preaching years. This year, 2021, has been the hardest. And what makes it even harder is that this is a Thanksgiving message. Made it very, very hard as the Holy Spirit brought things to mind. And, and, and He reminded me of, of the many people who uh, started 2020 with that special loved one at their side. And by the time Thanksgiving came around, that person was no longer there. And, 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 and will not be there for Christmas neither. He brought that to mind. And, and he reminded me of the many that are laying there on hospital beds right now. As I was preparing this message, I just wept time and time again as I thought about that. Of the many that are laying in hospital beds, you know, hoping and, and, and weeping and crying and wishing that they could once again hold their sons and their daughters or those that are hoping that they can see their spouse again or their parents again. Uh, and he brought that to mind, and he brought to mind the whole idea of those that are home uh, wishing and hoping and crying and weeping that that mom would, would, would be healed and that she would come home and that dad would be home again. Or that my, you know, that, that, you know, my son or my daughter would be home. Uh, he brought that to mind, and I just wept as I thought about it. What was their Thanksgiving like? How did they do during Thanksgiving? What I want us to do is to, if you can just do me a favor and just, just close your eyes for a moment. I want you to close your eyes. I want us to take a, a moment of silence before the Lord. Just close your eyes for a moment. And, 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 and just for a moment, I want you to pay attention to the image and the images that the Holy Spirit wants to bring to your mind right now. You know, because the heart of God weeps for people. The heart of God is burdened for people. And as he brings those images, do, do you see them? Do you see them there on the hospital bed? Do you see them with the tubes coming out of portions of their face and their body parts? Do you see them? Do you, do you see the little ones crying for mom and dad? Do you see the tears? And I want you to do me a favor, just in your heart, allow the Holy Spirit to pray in you, to pray in you for those people. Because he loves them, because he cares for them, because they mean something to God. Allow him to pray in you. Salvation, healing, restoration, reconnection, comfort. And then he brought to mind, well, he told me that, he told me that the devil and circumstances have, have blinded the church of seeing him and have clogged their ears of hearing him and have silenced their lips from declaring him and praising him through this pandemic. He brought that to mind. He spoke to me about me and about, and, and about us, about the church in general, about the followers of Jesus, his people, his followers. Um, do you have anything to be thankful about? Mm -hmm. You know, amidst the pandemic, amidst the pain, amidst the trials and the challenges, what has God been doing to you this year? What's he been up to? What's he been saying? What's he been doing? Do you have something to thank him about this Thanksgiving? 
blinded the eyes and they do not see me. The pandemic is far too big. Too much going on down here to see who's up there. Clog the ears that they don't hear. Too much going on, too much noise, too much thoughts that we don't hear him and, and silence the lips that they can't praise me and testify of who I am amidst this pandemic. Does anyone have something to say, I thank God because, I thank God because, anybody? I want to hear, just say it as the Spirit of the Lord leads you. I thank God because he's not heard enough of that during this pandemic. I thank God because. I thank God because he allowed me to have joy and peace through this pandemic. And allowed me to be able to share the reason for my joy and peace with my coworkers. And that I have no fear throughout all of this. I praise God that he has been working in my heart Silence the lips. There's no time to praise God. There's too much going on. I declare that a lie of the devil. Sister Anna. Anybody else? I thank God. Thank God for this church. I thank God that I can come and worship with you all because he's my minister. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that you, you still are speaking to your children. You still are hearing us when we cry, when we praise you. I thank you that you're still acting on our behalf and that we know that. And I thank you for all your love and your concern and your and we bless you today. Mm -hmm. I thank God because when I'm weak, he is strong. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. I thank mean, God because even though this year has been so hard and it's been painful a lot of times, my faith has been stretched and tested mm -hmm. so many times this year. But it's Amen. Anybody else? We thank God because it's I thank week. God because at work, co-workers, because of this pandemic, we had more time together. And so we've done some wonderful Bible studies together. And God has worked in our hearts in just such amazing ways as we took time to worship together and to study his word together. Amen. Amen. He's worthy of thanks. Amen. Amen. 
Anybody else? Thanksgiving. I thank you, Lord, because I thank Jesus because I thank Jesus because. Anybody else? Amen. Amen. Praise God. There's so much to give thanks to the Lord about. And then he spoke to me about me. The Lord spoke to me about me and and, and, and brought to mind who he's been and how he's been through the years and and, and he included you in it and, 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 and the you that he included didn't just in, it wasn't just the church but it was also those who are church are not in church goers but he included the you in my life not just you but he spoke to me about me but he didn't just leave it with me he spoke to me about you not just you the church but you who are non church goers he spoke to me about that. And he's been faithful as he reminds us of his faithfulness and his goodness and his grace and his love. Um, what I want to do today, what, so what God wants us to do this morning, uh, stay with me with this message, but what he wants us to do this morning is to, to put all of, the, all of the worldly cares to the side. Even if it's for the next 30 minutes or so, just put it all to the side and allow the Spirit of the Lord to speak into your hearts. Because there are some things and about speaking to our hearts because there are some things He's done in your lives regarding things He's done in your lives, because of things He's done in your lives, and things that, that I trust we are all recipients of. But also to speak to those who may not be recipients of it. So he spoke to me about me, but he also included you. And so I want to talk about that this morning. Uh, but before we do that, would you please stand with me and join me in prayer? The title of today's message is Thankfulness Amidst the Pandemic. Father, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your grace and for your love, God. We thank you that, uh, Lord, first of all, we, we confess, we confess, God, that this year has been a challenging year and, and perhaps the praises have simmered down somewhat. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the ears have been listening other voice, to other voices a little more than normal. Perhaps our eyes have had a hard time seeing the glory of our God because of the noise going on down here, God. And so, Lord, we bring that before you. Thank you for reminding us uh, this morning of things you've done and that, God, there is a praise report inside of our hearts. There is something and someone to praise and to worship and to be thankful for, and his name is Jesus. And so, God, we bless you and praise you. 
Father, we pray this morning as we begin this message, we pray in Jesus' name that you would, uh, Lord, we, we pray against any virus that has entered into this building this morning in the name of Jesus. We declare that our fear is of the Lord, our respect and our reference is for Jesus. We revere you as our great high priest and our great God. And Lord, we know that you have authority and power and dominion and supremacy over any virus in the name of Jesus. And so God, with the authority you've given us in your word, we rebuke and bind and send out in the name of Jesus this COVID-19 if it had visited our church this morning. Lord, if there's any man, woman, or child seated in this place right now that has the COVID and doesn't even know it, in Jesus' name, we declare it defeated and gone in the name of the Lord. We pray, oh God, that you would be glorified today. Holy Spirit, we invite you to minister, to prepare our hearts, to soften the hard hearts. Our Lord, to unclog clogged ears, to move in our hearts and in our lives. We need to hear word, a reminder from you, Spirit of the Lord. That we would walk out different than we walked in. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So it's been a tough year, hasn't it? And it, 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 it's, it's, been a, it's been a year that I'm going to be really honest with you this morning. If we was to look at things from a, a horizontal perspective, if you and I were to focus on the horizontal, not that we're not to look at horizontal things, uh, but if we was to focus, if that was our main focus on a daily basis, we would have very, very little to be thankful about this year. But if our focus is vertical, if our focus is heavenward, as Paul says in Colossians 3, that we're to keep our eyes on things above. By the way, that's a commandment in the Greek. If we was to focus uh, on vertical things on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we would find so much to be thankful about. And some of you declared that this morning. So it's been a, a tough year. Psalm 136. Uh, Psalm 136 is a unique chapter in the Bible because uh, every verse ends with the same four words. His love endures forever. Amen. And it's unique because there is no other chapter like that in the entire Bible. And it does that 26 times. We'll talk about that uh, another day. God gave me a, another message for that. But um, it's verses 23 through 25 that the Spirit of God has spoken to me about, that has promised, that he prompted, prompted regarding what he wants to do in our hearts, what he has already done in our hearts, uh, and he's been faithful. And so amidst everything that has gone on, amidst 2020, this this, you know, sad, unfortunate uh, year that we've gone through, amid, and that we're still going through it, and that we might still go through some more. Amidst all of that, how can we possibly be thankful? Why should we be thankful? Well, God wants to remind us of some things and to offer some things. He has offered and he continues to offer things that grant great thanksgiving Yes, even amidst a pandemic, we can still be thankful to the Lord. So in verses 23 through 25 up on the screen, these are the words. <coughs> he remembered us in our lowest state. His love endures forever. And he freed us from our enemies. His love endures forever. Church be in prayer. And he gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. And so as we think about his faithfulness and his grace, yes, his love does endure forever. And it's because his love endures forever that, that we can find so many things to be thankful about. His love does indeed endure forever. And so he spoke to me about what is most important, what is most important in 2020 amidst this pandemic, amidst everything that has gone on, what is most important? He spoke to me about that. And, 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 and church, it does not, it does not, nor can it change. I'm going to say that again because this is where the lips has been silenced. It does not, nor can it be changed. Please hear this. 
No pandemic can change it. No turning of events can change it. No calamity, misfortune, setback, or ill unexpected event can change it, even amidst a pandemic. He's faithful all the time. He's faithful amidst the pandemic. He works in ways that we don't even realize what he's doing. And so these verses that I'm going to talk about today do provide something for us to be thankful about. That's what he brought to me. He spoke to me about others. He spoke to me about the church. And then he pointed his loving, gracious fingers at me. And so I want to share with you why I'm thankful. And why we should all be thankful. Even amidst this sad pandemic. He's faithful to his word. But I want you to notice, first of all, uh, that he found me when I was lost. He found me when I was lost. And, 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 and if I've got that vertical focus uh, with the trials and the challenges and, and, and what has happened this year is still happening, if I've got that focus, I have something to be thankful about. He found me when I was lost. And that reminds me of a story I once heard about two elderly men. That the two elderly men were walking through Walmart uh, pushing a cart. And they actually collided. And the first old man says to the second one, he says, hey, please excuse me. I'm looking for my wife and I don't know where she's at. The other one says, well, that's okay because I'm looking for my wife and I'm kind of anxious. I haven't seen her in a long time. So the first guy says to the older guy, to the second guy, he says, then, well, tell me, maybe we can help each other find our wives. What does your wife look like? The second man says, well, she's, she's 27. She's tall with long red hair, blue eyes, and she's very pretty. And then he says to the other guy, well, what does your wife look like? And he said, it doesn't matter. Let's go look for your wife. <laughs> but when we think about looking, right, I have this, this I, I am horrendous um, at, at, at finding how to get to places. I have no sense of direction. You know that? Yeah. I think you've heard that before. I get lost all the time, right? A little bit lost. Oh boy, does he know. And he lives right around the corner. Listen, I get lost. I got lost recently going to Chris and Amy's house. I mean, they're, they're, they're two or three turns from the church. In, in fact, in fact, I, I, I would get lost coming to church on Sunday morning if it wasn't for the cars parked in front of this church pointing me into this church. So for those of you who get to church before me, thank you. You know, but my, my biggest... My biggest stress moment comes when I'm driving on an interstate mm -hmm. and I see that, that, that sign that says, you know, go work ahead, be ready for detour. Mm -hmm. and, and you see these orange signs with different words and rewording it from here to here as to what I need to do. Church, I have a hard time uh, reading the signs, let alone following them. But I do know that if I was to follow those signs very, very carefully, um, I can find another way to get to where I was going to. But the Bible tells me that there are no detours to heaven. There are no alternate routes to get to heaven. I was desperately lost. I was desperately disconnected from God with no direction, no hope, no purpose, uh, and no hope whatsoever as to where I would be should I die. And I needed direction for that, and I couldn't find it. I thought I could, but I couldn't find it. But then Jesus came. And then God came and found me in my lost estate and revealed to me that there is only one way to heaven and one way to know him and get our right lives right with him, and that was through Jesus. And he reminded me that he brought that to my attention. And in the process, what he did was he assured me of a place in heaven that I know I will be there when my life ends. A thought that is gu guiding the minds of many people these days. Yes, he, he found me in my lost estate and brought me to where I need to be brought to in order that I would know who I am and what I have in him. Did you know the Bible says that all people are lost? That all humans are lost because of our uh, we're not perfect. We all make mistakes. And in our lostness, we've, we've gotten lost. All people. 
Isaiah 53, 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We're all lost and separated from God. Do you know that? And so he found me in my lost estate. I thank God that Jesus came along the way. See, the problem with people is not that they're lost. The problem with people is that they don't know they're lost. That they don't know where they're going. Or they pretend they don't know and leave it alone for another time. But that's the main problem. It's not that people are lost. It's that they don't know they're lost. But when Jesus comes along the way, he is the one that helps us realize what we need to do in order to get right with God. You ever been driving and, 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 uh, and you realize you were lost? Anybody here ever got lost driving? Right? Man, you're like, so I got, I'm not alone. <laughs> I'm not alone. What do you do when you get lost? What do you do, right? If, 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 you, have a, if you have a cell phone, you go to that, right, that Google thing, you know, that a GPS thing, right? You go there, and, and or, or you call someone, I call Eileen, you know, I do everything I need to do. Why? Because I know I'm lost. I know I'm lost. And it happens a lot. And, and, and so it's the same thing with with the Lord. When we realize that we're lost, when we realize that we're not going the right way, when we realize that we're not getting to our destination, we need to call upon the Lord. He'll help us get there. He'll find us in our lowest state, but we need to call upon Him. We cannot get direction as to where to go unless we first call upon Him. You see, He's that phone we pick up. Hey, I'm here. How do I get over there? He's that phone we pick up to find out the GPS where we need to go. He's the one we need to call to. As desperate as we are when we're lost physically, we need to be as desperate when we're lost spiritually. It's the only way to find our way home. So in Luke 19.10, Jesus, Jesus, speaking of himself, says, For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. So Jesus came because people are lost. Have you ever thought about that? Jesus came because I was lost and because you're lost and because your neighbors and your friends and fellow workers that don't know Jesus Christ today are lost. And then he says in John 14, 6, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life and no one comes to the Father except through me. You hear that? He says no one finds his way to the ultimate place of destination unless he comes first to me. There's no other way. There's no alternate route to heaven, my friends. There's no alternate route. There's no detour to glory except through Jesus. I'm the way, the truth, the life. I will get you there. I'm your GPS. And so he found me in my lost estate. And I know today without a shadow of a doubt in my heart that when my time comes, which can be any moment, let's be for real, I know where I'm going. Because he found me in my lost state, and I've got something to be thankful about, even during a pandemic. Especially during a pandemic that can take our lives when we least expect it. And so praise God for his grace that he finds us, he found me, he, he came to me, and I praise him for that. But it did not happen until I realized that I was lost. Secondly, I want you to know that not only did he find me when I was lost, but he also freed me from my enemy. Hallelujah. Someone can say that, right? He freed me from my enemy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He freed me from my enemy. He freed us from our enemies. Verse 24. His love endures forever. It all revolves around his love. He freed me from my enemy. Satan the devil, who has one intention on a day-to-day -day basis in your life and my life, one intention, it doesn't change. And that intention is to keep you from glorifying and honoring and exalting the King of Kings in your life, which is what sends the Holy Spirit to work in you. The Holy Spirit works in you as a result of your seeking His face on a daily basis. But if the devil can block that connection with his lies, he will. He freed me from my enemy. How many of you guys like garage sales? I love garage sales and flea markets, man. We could be driving anywhere. 
If we see a sign for a garage sale, you know, five blocks away or such and such street on corner, I mean, we immediately hit that GPS thing and we're on our way. And, and when we get there, you know, there we are looking at all these, you know, hand-me-downs from other people that they're selling or giving away. Uh, but we get there, we, we, we were in, in Niagara Falls a few years ago, and I remember we were driving, and sure enough, we saw this sign for a garage sale, so we went there. My wife, Jeremiah, and I. And um, when we got there, the first thing I noticed was a big, humongous German Shepherd. They're beautiful dogs, by the way. They're beautiful dogs. Very big, way back there, about the distance of the door to the church there. And um, he was looking at us. And they're really pretty dogs, but this one looked mean, and he looked angry. I mean, I wish I could have asked him in dog language, have I ever done anything to offend you? But the look at his face was like, there he is. There he is, you know. And he looked hungry. He looked like they haven't fed that whole dog in days. And so I said to Jim, I could just walk very slowly. You don't want to show fear to dogs. You know that, right? Just walk very slowly. Be cool about it. And I'm watching this dog, and we're walking. We're a good distance from him, but we're walking. And I see his tail stops wagging. And his whiskers go up. And then all of a sudden, he does this thing with his feet. You know, like he thought he was a bull or something. You know, he does this with his feet. And then within moments, shoo, he, he, he dashed in my direction. And it was the weirdest thing because I'm running with Jeremiah for my life. I, 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 my whole life is flashing before me, okay? So I'm thinking, this is it, you know, it's gonna end like this. You know, you always wonder how you're gonna, how it's gonna end. Well, I'm thinking, this is, it's gonna end like this, and I'm thanking God for heaven, and you know, I'll be there in a little while, Lord, I'm on my way, you know, one of those things. And all of a sudden, this dog is running for his life, coming after us, and all of a sudden, he goes, and he falls down. Church, this is no joke. This dog is coming full speed ahead. And all of a sudden he goes, boom, like he hits a solid wall. Now I felt real spiritual. I was like, wow, my God. I got God on my side. I, I felt like Moses with the parting of the Red Sea. You know, I felt like, wow, God intervened for his child. I'm this spiritual giant. My God is on my side. I felt so good, so proud. And, and then I see the lady who owns the door coming out. And I said to her, what happened to your dog? And, and I'll be honest with you. I'm here thinking she's going to say, you must be some spiritual giant. There's no way in the world, you know, she, you must have God on your side. There's a God in angel with, with you right now. I'm thinking, I'm waiting for all that. I was even ready. To, after hearing that, to give a business card and say, listen, I'm a pastor of a church, and if you visit our church, God will move the same way. Just come visit us. But she has the audacity to tell me. Uh, actually, that's a mechanism. You know, there, there's this collar we put on the door, and, and it ex executes him, or he, it gives him a, a shot. You know, it gives him a shot, so the moment he gets to that wall, he can't go anywhere. It's an invisible wall. You know, some of you know about that. I think some of you have some of that at home in front of your refrigerator, right? No, but anyway, so the, she tells me that, and I'm like, oh, man. Here I am thinking, you know, I'm ready to tell the church what the Holy Spirit did, you know, how he moved, and, and this lady has the audacity to tell me it was some invisible fence or mechanism that electrocuted the dog. <laughs> By the way, that's not good for dog. I didn't do poor dog, you know, electrocuting my pet dog. So, um... Here's the thing, however, the dog, the dog did not know that he was captive. He didn't know he was captive. As far as that dog was concerned, I mean, the way he ran into that wall, <laughs> I still think of that, there's no way he knew that wall was there. So he doesn't know that he's captive. Little does he know that he can go, but he can't go any further than this particular distance. And you know something? I was in the same place like that dog was. That dog reminded me about me. He only reminded me about me, that I, I thought that I, and, and we're so good at that, I thought that I can do whatever I want and go wherever I want to go. I can live the way I want to live. You know, I can do whatever I want to do. Uh, and, and that's so like the enemy. He allows you to enjoy your life and try this and try that and try that and try this. Uh, but at the moment that you say, I want to fix my life and make it better,
there's that wall. We can't go beyond that wall of success, of changing our lives, of becoming better people, of saying no more to the habits and to the strongholds and to the difficulties and to the lifestyle and to the attitudes and to the anger and to the lack of joy and to the lack of peace and to the lack of praise and to the lack of worship. When we want to start doing those things, a mechanical war appears before you. You can go this far, but no further. And so that door reminded me of me. Isn't it so much like the enemy? But God freed me from my enemy. And that's worth giving him praise and thanksgiving for. He is faithful. He is gracious. He is loving. But listen to this. There is no way in the world, no way in the world that we are going to uh, try to fix our lives or to find our way or to uh, become better people if we think that everything is a-okay. As long as we think that we are in total control, everything is fine. But when we realize that we can't go any further than this, now we realize that we're being captivated by something. And if that something is not Jesus, if that something that is captivating me, that teaches me how to live and how to make it right and how to honor and glorify God, if it's not that, thank God that Jesus uh, guides us by his spirit as to how far we can go as far as decisions that we make. But in order to know that I need to be free, I need to first know that I am captive to something. If I don't know I'm captive, I'm not going to seek to be freed. Mm -hmm. And so I thank God that Jesus came and freed me from my enemy. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 4 says that the enemy has blinded the mind of unbelievers so that they do not see the truth of the gospel. The enemy has blinded the mind of the unbeliever, that is, those that are not walking with God, those who think they have it all together and everything is fine. But the moment that you begin to say, I'm going to change my way of life and my way of thinking, uh, the enemy, there's the, the screen door, the glass door that you can't see. He has blinded the mind of unbelievers. Jesus himself declares in John 10, 10 that the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. He comes to steal from your life everything and anything that is good and that is positive. Anything in your life that has positive connotations, he comes to steal that. He comes to steal, to kill, to take away. You ever had a dynamic passion for God? Excited about Jesus? And three or four days later, it's gone. Where did it go? Where did it go? Where did that passion, that desire to serve and to love and to honor and to worship and to experience and to read his word and to draw closer? And where did it go? To steal, to kill, to destroy, to take away, to remove. That is who he always has been. It started in Genesis chapter 3. We spoke about that not too long ago. It started right there. God promised them the world, dominion over animals and over nature and over everything that there was. Everything was beautiful for them. But someone came along along the way as a serpent, right? And he did what he does even till today. Steal, kill, destroy. That's who he is. But Isaiah 61 and verse 1 says that Jesus comes to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Amen. He comes to set free. And so we can praise. We can worship. We can get excited. We can say, hallelujah. We can get excited. Why? Because he has freed me from my enemy. The pandemic says don't praise. It says don't sing. It says don't get excited. It says don't shout. Don't get too thankful. Look at what's going on. 61 million people have this virus. How can you thank God? He has freed me from my enemy. And that's worthy of praise and worthy of thanksgiving. 
Jesus comes to set the captives free. And John 8, 36, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. You know what that means in the original? He's free indeed. That means he is free undoubtedly. He is undoubtedly free. He has nothing to worry about ever, ever again. He has freed me from my enemies. He spoke to me about me. But he also included you. That's who he is. Amidst this whole pandemic, we have something to be thankful about. And never, ever forget that. It can get worse out here. But when we have this vertical connection, it's no longer about what might be, it's, it's about what is. We don't serve a what might be God. We serve a what is God. We serve a who is God. We serve a who he is God. Our minds should not be wondering what's going to happen next or who's in charge of, is this going to change or that. It's, it's all about who he is and what I have in him. And thirdly and last, I want you to notice that he fed me when I was hungry. <laughs> Hallelujah. He fed me when I was hungry. Yeah, he, he gives food to every creature. His love endures forever. Remember that everything revolves around the love of God, not about the goodness of Pastor J or the goodness of so-and-so. You know, he fed us because we were good. He was good to me because I was good to him. He looked out for me because I looked out for him. It's not about that. His love endures forever. His mercy is new every morning. It's because of who he is that we can rejoice in what we have. When was the last time you were hungry? Well, Caleb, let's not, let's not ask Caleb because, you know, he won't remember the last time he wasn't hungry. So when was the last time you were hungry and what did you do when you were hungry? What do you do when you're hungry? I mean, you know, I don't know about you, but I mean, when I'm hungry, uh, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to, to, to feel that, that hunger, that desire that I have. I'm, I'm not going to sit around and wait till something happens. I'm going to get up and check the refrigerator, and if there's nothing there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to look in the cabinets, and if there's nothing there, I'm going to call Eileen. And if it still doesn't work, I'm going to get in my car and go to McDonald's or some fast food place and get me something to eat. And if that doesn't happen because I have no money, remember I am a pastor, we can't discount that. But if that doesn't happen, I'm going to go knocking on your door, so be on the alert. That's why the door, who's that? It's pastor. Oh, he's okay. Maybe I did something wrong. No, I'm hungry. So in other words, when we're hungry, we do whatever we need to do to feed ourselves. And when we think about this, that the Bible, when the Bible refers to, to hungering for something or thirsting for something. It often revolves not from a physical perspective, but from a spiritual. In other words, when the Bible talks about being hungry, um, Matthew 5 and verse 6, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. He's not talking about physical food. Blessed, I'm going to bless. I'm going to make happy, literally. I'm going to make happy those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. That, that their, their desire is to be men and women for Jesus. That the world looks at them and knows immediately that they're men of God or women of God. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 15, 16, when your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. When your words came, I, I, you know, I consumed your word. Jesus says, my food is to do the will of the Father. So when your words came, I consumed them. I internalized them. They overtook my inner being. I was filled with your word. That's what it is to be hungry for the things of God. That's what it is to long. Psalm 34 and verse 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed are those who take refuge in him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. We went out to eat yesterday. What was the name of that place? House of Nam. N-A-A-N. 134 Main Street. Uh, we ate 
Mediterranean Indian food, my God, I thought of Sam and Heather for whatever reason. You will love, you will love it, trust me. Um, they're our neighbors, they own that place. My gosh, we, we ate up a storm in there. I'm still feeling the after effects. Leave that bathroom door open. No, anyway, but, uh, but I mean, we ate the law. We had an awesome time. But, you know, taste and see that he is good. In order to know that something is good, you have to taste it. You have to put it in your mouth and taste it and make sure it is good. That's what's going to determine if it's good or not. And Psalm 119, 103, the psalmist there says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Isn't that awesome? That beautiful word. And so he fed me when I was hungry, when I was longing for this move of God in my life. It's hunger. It's spiritual hunger. It's a spiritual desire. It's, it's a longing for something more. It's knowing that something is missing, that something's not right, that, that something is lacking. I love Jesus, but I don't love him enough. I want to love him more. I met Jesus, but I've not met him enough. I want to meet him more. I've encountered Jesus, but I've not encountered him enough. I want to encounter more. I've been touched by Jesus, but I want to be touched even more. I know Jesus. I've experienced Jesus, but I want to that much more. That's hunger for God. It's a spiritual desire. It's a spiritual passion, a spiritual longing. And the wonderful thing is that the more you have, the more you want. And so he, he fed me when I was hungry. He fed me. It, when I'm hungry, I don't know about you, but I don't know about you, but when you're hungry, doesn't your stomach sometimes let you know? Yeah, you hear these crazy alien noises, you know, I mean, it's like, it's talking, it's like my stomach is talking to me, and it's telling me, feed me, feed me, and he doesn't care where you're at, by the way, I've sat in, I've sat in interview sessions, I've sat with girlfriends, don't tell Eileen I said this, I've sat with girlfriends, and, and, and my stomach begins to speak up, and the person says, are you okay, yeah, everything all right, yeah? it's the terrible thing, like, be quiet, not now, later, you know, but the stomach will let you know when you're hungry. And it's the same thing in the spiritual realm. It's the same thing in the spiritual realm where the Holy Spirit begins to, if, if we're listening, if we're listening, he begins to, to impress within your spirit and within your heart that something's missing. Mm -hmm. The praise is not what it used to be. The commitment to the book, the dedication, the commitment, the desire, the passion, the longing, the hunger, the tears, the joy has dissipated somewhat. And the Holy Spirit begins to impress upon your heart that something is missing. There's a sense of dryness. There's a sense of a lack of a passion as the Holy Spirit begins to let you know. And church, if you listen closely enough, we've been talking about that for almost a year now, right? If you listen closely enough to that voice, that internal voice, He'll tell you that what's missing is Jesus. What's missing is Jesus. It's a reconnection. It's a recommitment. It's a drawing back to him and to what you want or he wants to do in your life. Mm -hmm. He still feeds the hungry. And the hunger comes from him, by the way. That's a good thing to pray, by the way. It's a good prayer to pray, God, give me more hunger. The hunger comes from him, but he still feeds the hungry. But in the same way that when we are hungry physically, we run to the refrigerator, we run to the restaurant, we do whatever we need to do to feed our belly. Whenever that happens, well, in the spiritual realm, it's the same thing. We have to feed ourselves the Word of God. We have to feed on the Holy Spirit. We have to feed spiritual things. We need to fill ourselves with spiritual things in order to receive the feeling that we need in our lives when we are spiritually hungry. And so praise God, he fed me when I was hungry. When was the last time you were hungry? This morning you were hungry. When was the last time you were hungry and what did you do when you were hungry? Yes, I praise God for his grace. I'm thankful for uh, his grace in my life. I'm thankful for what he's done in my life. Amidst this pandemic, I can still thank him because he found me when I was lost. And he freed me from my enemy. And he fed me when I was hungry. 
praise report, thanksgiving to Jesus in spite of a pandemic, especially in a pandemic where so much has been lost and so much has been removed from our memory because of the so much that we're seeing on our horizontal perspective. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. Listen, it doesn't nor can it change. Please hear this. It doesn't nor can it change. No pandemic can change it. No turn of events can change it. No calamity, misfortune, or a setting back of things can change it. No ill or unexpected event can change it. He spoke to me about to me about me, but he also included you. Let's pray. And if you're here today, you would say, Pastor, I need that. Pastor, I need that. I just want you to stand. I need that. I need that this morning. I need to praise him because I've, I've been found. I need to praise him because I've been found. And by standing, you're declaring your praise and your thanksgiving to him. If you're out there today on YouTube or Facebook uh, and, and you're seated there right now, I want to encourage you. Have you allowed Jesus to find you? Are you lost today from that heavenly dwelling, that, that promise of his word that when that time comes, you'll be in glory? Will you admit this morning that you are lost and you want to be found? And I want to encourage you to stand up for Jesus. And if you're here and you would say and you're out there on, on YouTube or Facebook or our church website and you're here and you know that the enemy has bombarded you with the cares of this world has pulled you away and caused you to be half lackadaisical in your walk with God. God wants to free you. We can be Christians yesterday and be bound today again. Jesus wants to free you on a day-to-day -day basis. And so if you're here and you're uh, uh, hearing us online, would you, if you're one to say, I want Jesus, I want, I want to live in freedom. I want to live victorious. I want to live conscious of the Lord. Would you just stand? Let's pray. Let's bring it to Jesus and call the devil a liar. Every hold has been broken. Every lie overtaken in the name of Jesus. And if you know in your heart of hearts that you're hungry right now for the Lord, your commitment to the word is not what it used to be at one time. You're longing for the word and then the joy of hearing and receiving the blessings of his word. When you're reading, you're just not reading to read. We can do that with any book, a magazine. But when we read the Bible, we're reading to receive. And he's feeding us joy and excitement and sometimes tears as he speaks to us about what's in our own, our own hearts. And so if you're here today or listening online and you know in your heart of hearts that you need to be fed spiritual things because of other things, you know, junk food has a way of visiting us from sometimes. And we get that piece of cake, right, Sister Dawn, Sister, Sister Deb, that we should not have, you know, we, the, 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 the junk food. Spirit of God, give us, give us your food to be whom you've called us to be. I praise you and thank you, God, for those that are standing. I, stay with, I stand with them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, protect us from lax. Protect us from thinking that we are all fine. Everything is cool. The devil can't touch me. Be self-controlled and alert. The enemy prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for whom to devour. Just stand if you need to stand. You know who you are. He wants you to thank him for what's most important. Not for what the news media is telling us. Thank him for what's most important. Did he find you? Do you need him to find you right now? Did he free you? Do you need him to free you right now? Did he feed you? Do you need him to feed you right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, I stand with those that are standing. We thank you and praise you for your grace. We thank you this morning, uh, Lord, that you give us every single day something to be thankful about. We thank you for what you've done and for what you're doing. I pray for any that are standing that are standing because they want that. They want to be beneficiaries to what you've given and what you've provided and what we can hold on to every single day of our lives. Lord, would you touch them? 
Would you embrace them? Would you remind them that, that, that you're here for them? Lord, I pray that you would draw their hearts to you. If there's anyone out there who needs to do this, pray with me, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, I give you my heart. Lord, I need to be found. I'm lost and I need to be found. I need, I need to know how to get to you and walk with you. I commit my heart and life to you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. I've been strapped by the hold of the devil, and in the name of Jesus, today I declare my freedom in Christ. I'm hungry, and I need more hunger for you and for your word, O oh God. I've been feeding on things that I should not. But today I pray you to feed me what I need to be who I need to be, God. I thank you, Father, for your grace and for your love, for your faithfulness, God, in Jesus' name.